Good afternoon, um, honorable guests, uh, distinguished scholars, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Nonnery Pison Yabut from TDI, Thailand. Uh, unfortunately, uh, our president, Dr. Somkiet, has uh, other equally important uh, things that he needs to be done. That's why uh, I'm, I come uh, for his behalf. So today's topic, I will um, share you experience about uh, the populism, the case of Thailand. Uh, in, in my agenda, I have uh, four topics that I will discuss. First, I will briefly talking about what is exactly is the populism. At least this is in my own view, okay? I have to make a disclaimer that this is uh, all my own idea. So everything that is uh, maybe wrong or not correct is my fault, not my institution and not my country. And also my second, uh, for the second uh, topic that I will talk about is I will share you about the populism in Thailand, how it happened, why it happened, and then finally, because uh, we don't have much time, I will briefly talk about how to address them. Okay. Okay. So the first topic is what is the populism. So I looked up um, at the dictionary and I found that it's not a bad thing, right? Because um, what I found is that it, it states that populism is the policy that are intended to get the support of ordinary people or the majority of people. But it's exactly the spirit of the, the democracy, right? Because we try to serve the majority of the people. Why is this bad? And also I was thinking, what about the opposite of the populism? Then it must be policy that serves only minority. Then this must be bad, right? So populism itself, at least in my opinion, it's not a bad thing, but it could become bad. And I've been thinking about this uh, for a while, and then I found out that there are four ways that populism can turn bad, okay? The first, the first thing that it can turn bad is that maybe people, the majority, do not exactly know what they want. And this is uh, the very um, a case for Thailand. For example, we have the labor union tied to raise the minimum wage by two times, three times. But then that will create like inflation or major unemployment to the system. And in that sense, that's why populism become bad. If we allow the majority to set up the minimum wage, then it could be bad. Then there are also other examples that uh, populism can be bad as well. So the second, um, <clears throat> the second example is uh, when the people don't care much about future, future generation. And then you can see, for example, uh, in the case of Trump tax plan, they try to reduce the tax rate, which is equi equivalently to a more fiscal stimulus. But then they will create that burden in for future generation by much. And so this is kind of thing also can become the bad side of the populace. The third one is that what if people don't care about minority growth? If they can set up, you know, a group of people can kind of coalition, put on the coalition and make policy only to serve themselves, the majority, then minority could, could suffer from the populism policy as well. Finally, this is not in the case of Thailand, but in case of other countries. What if the majority of the people don't care much about other countries? For example, they don't care much about the migrant worker who come from other countries or Trump, Brexit, these are examples that people care only for themselves, for their own nationality. So these are four examples that I think uh, the populism can turn back. Now, for Thailand, uh, a brief history of the populism in Thailand. I believe Thailand is among the first uh, countries in the modern era that experienced populism. We have faced populism since 2001. Uh, if you um, can see, uh, I'm not sure you follow Thai politics or not, but he's the one who introduced populism in the political system in Thailand. He called uh, his uh, tax in Chinawan. So back in the old days, uh, we don't have much choice. People don't have much choice. But then he came up with the idea of why don't we try to create a policy for the poor people? And that's what he did. So in 2001, he won the election by landslide. And he set up eight years about eight years of his uh, 
he ruling the country for almost eight years. And at first, his policy was great. Okay, uh, I don't have much time to go over all of that, but one of the policy that I like the most is the 30 bar program, the healthcare reform. So back in the old days, people, you know, when you go to the hospital, you know, it's almost all out of your pocket. But then he come up with, with the idea that why don't we create, reform the, the health system such that everyone who go to the hospital will pay only 30 baht, which is equivalent to $1. So this type of policy truly serves poor people, which at that time we have like 10, 15 million of people who cannot get access to the medical uh, health care. So this kind of thing, that's why I'm, I'm telling you that at first it was really great. But then after the first eight years, it started to turn back. And now I'm thinking about back in my school that when, when we have this, this type of picture, I'm not sure you are an economist or not, but at first it's like we are moving on the, on the, on the curve, so, so is this okay? But then at the end we will reach a turning point. So the populism in Thailand uh, turns bad when we reach the trading of point where the gain from the majority must come from the minority. And in that sense, it's become bad. And so it, it, uh, the, <coughs> the populism in Thailand became bad, I, I believe, after 2011. And it turned to, at, at which uh, it bottomed in 2013 with the policy called the life hedging scheme. For those of you who don't know about the life hedging scheme, uh, you need to know two things. First is that, um, uh, we Thai people, we eat rice all year. So this is every month we want to eat rice. But farmer can produce rice only, I think, two or three times a year. And in that sense, you will see that there will be typical months that we have excess supply. So the price will be very, very low because you know every farmer produced that at that time. And then there will be certain months that the price of rice is high because uh, the, they are not uh, being so much. But then the right patient scheme back in the old days, they tried to help the poor people who cannot prolong their selling. They cannot hold because they need money. That's why they need to sell the stuff. And so the government kind of buy, buy that in advance at lower price. And then after that, uh, uh, the, the poor can, can buy the rice back and sell at the market. But then this, this government, and the, um, he, she is actually, she's actually um, his sister. Okay, so his sister come up with an idea that why don't we buy it at 50% above the market price? And this is huge, right? Because back in the old days, the right packaging cost to be lower so that you know, people will, will, will come back and, and buy it. Because I have very limited time. So at the end, um, the cost of the program is about uh, 519 billion, which is exactly around 1% of the GDP per year. And that's why we, I'm, I'm telling you that this is the worst that happened of the populism uh, for Thailand. So let me try to explain why, why the populism rise in Thailand, okay? Uh, I would like you to pay attention to this line. You will see color. Um, this is the line of the who is in charge of the country after 1932. Before that, we were ruled by king, okay? In 1932, we changed the system to democracy. But then, before 2001, that populism, which represented in red, rise, we have only two choices. Thai people have only two choices. Either you pick green or military government, or you pick yellow, which is representative democracy. But the problem is that both of them, they don't care much about poor people. Okay, they either serve the businesses, or they serve the elite of the people. So in 2001, that's why Thaksin came here with the red, with the populism uh, party, and they won the election mostly in, in the recent period. So I, I would like to um, state this point to show you that. First, I don't think populism is bad, because at least in the case of Thailand, it introduced competition in the political system. Back then, we have only two, two choices. Now we have three choices. But to be able to live with it. I think the, <coughs> the system must somehow 
managed to control the bad side of the populist policy. And so I raised here five ways that can be done to do that. Okay? The first way is to improve the parliamentary check and balance system. So this is like in the US, we need filib filibuster. We also need like the reconciliation rules where the majority of the people cannot easily pass the bill or the legislation law. We also need more knowledge from, from the think tank. Okay, I, I need two more minutes. Uh, we need more knowledge from the think tank. So back in the old days, we only have the think tank that serve the government. Okay, people don't listen to us, TDI, we are independent think tank. But back in the, for example, in the right pitching scheme, the budget office that attached to the government, they estimate that the cost of the right pitching scheme is like $100 billion, but the actual cost is like five times higher. So we need independent think tank to try to estimate really the true cost of the policy and give this to the public so that they will know that what, what they are choosing right now. Uh, <clears throat> so I have three more. Uh, the, third, the third way to solve uh, the populist problem is to make sure that people can use direct democracy. So for example, if you have any problem with any law you, and that affect minority of the people, up to like 100,000 uh, people, then they can sign the petition to change or to make sure that, that uh, the government really consider their, their, their law. The fourth way is to um, create the law that prevent, uh, prevent bad use of the government spending. And this is for example, uh, like the bird rule law of the US where you cannot uh, create budget deficit up to 10 years, for example. Finally, we need not only from academia, we need media. We need the uh, uh, independent party and we also need people because the populism policy cannot be solved by scholar like me or independent agency like me, but we need all of the agency in the countries to know the problem. And I think the best thing that I would like uh, to suggest is that to solve the populism problem, you need to open the data. You need to make sure the government review all of the data and then all of the agent can actually examine what's, what's truly going on. Okay, I end my presentation here, thank you.